been working as a full stack developer uh, for the past couple of years. On the front end, I've uh, uh, always worked with uh, React and Redux and other libraries that go along with that. And on the back end, uh, majority of my experience is with uh, Node.js. Uh, I've also worked with uh, Java on one of my earlier projects. Like in a nutshell, a brief introduction about myself. So if if you want me to explain anything in detail, uh, you know, I I would love to. Yeah, there is nothing. Means, yeah, but you are okay with that one. So, do you uh, brief me something you have worked on Node.js or something like front-end technologies also along with that? Yeah, so on the front end, it's uh, I've only worked with React and uh, Redux and um, those flavors. And on the back end, uh, majority, it's been with uh, Node.js, yes. Okay, so your any projects that you have worked on Node.js, can you explain me what you have done on that one? Sure. So in my last uh, capacity uh, in the, uh, microservices architecture on the back end with uh, uh, all our uh, servers uh, on uh, Node.js servers running, uh, you know, with the help of routing uh, made uh, easy with uh, Express.js on the back end. And uh, we, we were using REST and uh, GraphQL combination. So it, it was not completely GraphQL or REST. Majority was REST, but they were trying to uh, you know, bring in GraphQL. So a few of the services were implemented in GraphQL. And on the front end, uh, we were using uh, React and Redux. Uh, and uh, for uh, CI, CD, uh, it was uh, GitLab. And we were also, they had a local uh, 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 gateway uh, on F5, uh, which was uh, set up. Uh, okay, so you have written APIs and all in that one. In yes, that so Node.js. Yes. yes, so basically, when we get a requirement uh, and uh, uh, you know we wait till we get the uh, 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 we write um, APIs uh, on our side. Uh, uh, microservice based so uh, they, we have a, and then we write our APIs uh, uh, using ExpressJS and then once that is uh, in ready or in progress we are, uh, we start on the front end also depending on you know the bandwidth who's doing what okay so how many APIs are there in your microservices means how many services are there it uh, it was uh, a, a big project so I, I I've not worked on all the different microservices in that but uh, as far as I remember, uh, when I left the project, we had uh, around 40 something microservices different. Okay. And how the database is stacked up for those microservices? So, uh, database is again uh, separate databases, uh, separate database instance for uh, each uh, microservices. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure where they are hosted because it, it was all the already set up and a joint yeah. and I think for a session and all that uh, we were using Redis uh, 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 for the uh, caching and all that stuff yeah. uh, because it was uh, our service we did not have a login option so the login has to be done from the government entity site we used mm -hmm. to re redirect them and then once we get the token back we validate that and then we let the user in okay so how you are basically validating those tokens back with them uh, so uh, b basically, they do the validation. So once the uh, 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 they, we have uh, two different main uh, validation, which is uh, by the government entity. Uh, one uh, it was uh, through uh, you can do the username and login on the government entity, or you can use uh, an app also verified app. Once you do the login over there, then the government entity redirects back to our uh, website. Our uh, application mm -hmm. was called Dam. And then once we get it, we have the uh, ID uh, from that when they redirect back. Okay. So think of like you have redirected to their system and it's validated, your credentials are validated and it's coming back to your system. Okay. So mm -hmm. that while coming back to your system, like your APIs are exposed to them because you are sending to them and coming back. Suppose I'll get your API. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to hack your system. How you will stop me in doing that? How so you are I mean, managing that one? I mean, the first of all, uh, we are the traffic is through uh, HTTPS, right? so that is mm -hmm. secure. So uh, in terms of hacking, and uh, 
any other way that i can think of uh, hacking is would be uh, a physical wherein you have access to someone's uh, 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 app on their uh, uh, phone and you are able to log in to that and then also you have their username and password then yes that would be an issue but uh, uh, yeah yeah please yeah, go i'm sorry yeah. yeah think of something like i got your api because okay. if it runs on browser or somewhere i can get easily the api of a system if i get your api and try to hit it and get try to get the credentials of a user not credentials i think mostly email ids people need to hack phone numbers and all if i get those information also it's a big information for me so how yeah. you will protect my security there my credential security so uh, uh the architecture that was implemented uh, it was uh, oauth uh, in the uh, transferring so uh, I, I, as far as i remember the way it works is you give the username and password uh, to the you know once you, so even if you had access to the apis you would need access to the username and password of the the user that you are trying to access right and then you would have to uh, get that and then login you get the token right so even if you tried hitting our uh, apis it would not work and one more thing is uh, we have our uh, api gateway uh, which uh, pretty much uh, clears out any other uh, uh, traffic outside of uh, the verified ones so basically uh, you would have to like even the apis that we write new apis we will have the api key along with that so until and unless you have our api key you you know even if you try hitting the apis you will not uh, uh, get any response like it will be uh, 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 forbidden so from front end from react when you are calling the node api how you are pa- passing that api key uh, so basically what we do is we have a, an environment file mm-hmm. and uh, in the environment file we do not put all the api keys so api keys are stored uh, uh, at the cluster level i think uh, uh, our devops team or the uses a uh, 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 docker instances running mm-hmm. on uh, kubernetes cluster okay. so when we build our app uh, api or front end app uh, we just mention the key of the uh, like key value uh, key of the api key in our environment file so we have different files like we have staging we have production we have test so depending on when you build it and then uh, when they deploy it onto the uh, 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 like environment you know, depending it be production or staging uh, that process uh, picks it up uh, from the keys that they have stored so basically what we do is uh, we if if we need to add a new key we have to let the devops team know they will add it to the helm uh, they store all the keys in helm and then uh, they give us the key so basically api key they store it and they give us another key and then we mark the key in the environment file and then when the build of a production happens or a stage happens it checks for uh, whatever key is listed in the environment file it picks it up and then uh, you know it uh, passes it on to the process uh, global variable of the uh, node uh, instance okay so you have used express for your API yeah. development yeah yeah uh, express yes on the back end yeah so when you get a request you want to validate some certain attributes saying these are correct or not then only you will pass if it is not correct you are throwing error to front end saying suppose you have some mandatory saying your email id should be mandatory your first name should be mandatory or your phone number should be mandatory so how you are validating your request when it reaches to you so basically what we do is uh, the first point of interjection is uh, at the front end so we make sure that you know it doesn't even get to the back end That's so true. for the mandate mandatory fields and then the second point would be uh, like if, if if we wanted to add another layer of uh, uh, you know uh, verification to make sure that the user did not enter something and you know it is not a valid one then we uh, on the back end we uh, have schemas Mm-hmm. Uh, uh verification schemas uh, what we used was uh, joi uh, uh module and then we define it uh, as to this these fields are required and what is not required and then we make use of that as a, a middleware in the express app so you know it uh, passes only through the verification then it get, you know gets to whatever 
the rest of it that needs to be done so how you call that middleware from your code so uh, basically uh, like whatever route that we are trying to validate mm -hmm. so we uh, like slash login or whatever and then we pass mm -hmm. this configuration uh, the middleware as the uh, second argument and then mm -hmm. uh, what once that is done you know, we can just call the next function inside that and then it the control passes over to the third uh, argument which is uh, whatever that we were doing uh, regularly okay okay so any code vulnerability or anything in the code how you are checking in origins uh like for example what what, uh, uh, what, what suppose you are writing some code which is vulnerable or which is not in the right syntax or something like it might be a bad practice to write such type of codes sure so uh, i think um, one one thing that i i can remember is so because it was a government project we are a separate team for uh, uh, penetration testing and uh, you know cyber for security and all that stuff so they used to tell us what you know this needs to change but one thing i remember is uh, there was uh, uh, an instance where uh, we were uh, uh, trying to access the user uh, 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 Emirates ID, which is kind of like a, a, a secure ID that each person has on the front end. So, which was again, you know, we uh, because the user does not log into our system using username and password. So, uh, they were trying to hit the API from the front end to fetch the Emirates ID and use it. So, that was a vulnerability there. So, what we had to do was we had to move that uh, call to the back end. because uh, it was the same thing that you know we did not need it at the client side so uh, at the emirates id field we just sent a key to the backend saying that this needs to be fetched once you know it gets to the server and then the server fetches the emirates id uh, making sure that you know it doesn't come on to the client side uh, exposing it so that is one thing i remember and other thing is like in terms of api um, and, uh, practices and all that the, uh, there was a set of uh, rules that was i mean rules as in there was a process that was followed and uh, to be honest i'm not 100% sure like you know where the architecture was uh, taken from like when i joined it was already in place Uh, in terms of you know uh, there was only one file that needed to be changed uh, uh, that there was like a common controller uh, uh, for each new apis that were built so minimal changes uh, in terms of that okay so you were on spread operator yes i have uh, you are talking about es6 uh, spread operator yes right yes so what is the use of spread operator and how it helps us in node so uh, i think uh, the most common use that i've uh, used to spread operator is to create a new object or an array so basically because uh, you know even if we try creating a new object just by assigning it to a variable it still uh, references the the actual uh, uh, object so it gets mutated so before we had to do the object dot create and stuff now we can just use a spread operator to create a new one and it, one more thing is you can easily uh, put values of another uh, array or object using the spread operator and then we can add on to that uh, extra ones and one more thing spread operator can be used is at the arguments for a function where we are not sure about uh, how many arguments can be passed in you know we can just use a spread operator and the uh, 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 um argument over there and then it can take in multiple uh, different arguments instead of uh, you know how many we define so that is couple of use cases that i've had to uh, go through yeah, you have used the maps in your code uh we are talking about higher order uh, functions but uh, array function right dot map yes 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 oh how you have utilized that so map again uh, basically uh, mostly i've used it uh, within the react elements wherein you had to display a set of uh, react elements uh, like an array of uh, thing that needs to be you know mapped through so basically what we do is we map through the array and then uh, the map returns us uh, the object back so uh, that that is one use case yeah. okay 
So what code you have written for that? Can you just give me some code for that one that you have written? Like an example of how yeah. we would write it. Yes. Yeah. So basically, we would like we have an array of uh, objects or elements or whatever. We just do dot map, and then we open the uh, curly brace. I mean, open the round braces, and inside that we define whatever like an argument which uh, uh, you know it gives us one by one. And then uh, we can just uh, use the anonymous function, uh, you know, equal to and uh, the arrow function, and then uh, just whatever we need to return back. We don't have to specifically mention the return because map by default returns it uh, one by one. So we can you know collect it in an array or we can you know uh, display it in inside a, a random method. So, how you are calling other microservices in your environment? One service to another service? Uh, like, for example. Uh, for example, you are working on one service. You want some data from a different service to be called. Some APIs from a different service. So, it's like inter-service. You have to communicate and bring some data back. So, uh, so we we were uh, specifically calling the different APIs from different microservices. Mm -hmm. So we d were, were, it was very rare that we were calling from one microservice to another microservice. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't remember anything because what we did is if if there was a connection between one API that thought was related to a microservice, we put it as part of that cluster so that you know the communication between microservices was, was minimum. But uh, like you mentioned, I did have to call different microservices to get the data back. We, uh, sometimes, like uh, the government entity which gives us the uh, Emirates ID, uh, it was a separate one, and that uh, basically had to be used with any other microservice. So I would have to specifically hit that API and you know uh, uh, gateway, and then the gateway redirects it to. Uh, in our microservice and then the external gateway that will redirect to the uh, government entity which fetches the data back. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you have worked yeah. on any type of cloud? Uh, as in um, not fully hands-on, I mean not professionally on the you know, cloud DevOps, but uh, like I said, uh, in a previous project we used uh, uh, Amazon uh, uh, S3 bucket for uh, storing uh, uh, files, like when we were uploading documents or anything, that was one of the things. But uh, AWS EC2 and all that stuff, not professionally, but like you know, I usually um, uh, enroll for something and I try to keep myself updated, but not professionally. Okay. okay. 